I'm going to use this simple video to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to generate a scatter plot and then to add a regression line to it. First thing we'll need to do is open up Excel. So I'll start Microsoft Excel and I'm going to open up a blank workbook. And I'm going to use a simple example that everybody can follow the math so that it's not uh, too challenging to do that. And we can just focus on using Excel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a graph that has area of a circle and also the circumference of a circle. So I'm going to make three headings. Radius will be one, and then area, and then circumference. Now in the radius, I'm just going to enter six values. One, two, three, four, five, and six. If you're not familiar with making formulas in Excel, watch how I make the area formula. I highlight the box right here, and then I'm going to hit an equal sign, and that tells Excel what comes after this is not data, but instead it's a formula. And the area of a circle is pi times r squared. Well, I could enter 3.1415 if I wanted to for pi, but I also can insert formulas directly. So I click on formulas, and then this little box shows up here that has fx with this arrow key in it. That's an insert function into the current cell. I'll click on that and I get a whole bunch of different options where I can choose formulae. If I go to math and trigonometry, then I get this other little menu and one of them is pi. So I'll click on pi. Now when it puts pi in here, it puts parentheses after pi. I'm not really sure why that is, but uh, you have to leave those parentheses blank. So I'm going to click outside the parentheses and then I want pi times r squared. So I'll hit the times, which is uh, shift 8, and then the radius is what's in the radius column. So I'm going to point to that and just click on the column that has radius. So it's going to take pi times the radius, but I want it to be squared. So back inside my box now, I'm going to go hat key, which is shift 6, and then 2. So pi r squared. When I hit return, instead of putting that formula there, it puts the result of the formula, pi r squared. Now I want Excel to do this for everything in that column for all the radii. So I'm going to do what's called a fill. I'm going to click on the cell that has my formula in it, and then as I move my cursor down to the lower right-hand corner of the box, it turns from a hollow cursor into a solid plus sign. Watch that. Hollow cursor, solid plus sign. Once it's a solid plus sign, I click and hold and drag down to the bottom of my data. And now it puts that same formula in all those cells and calculates the area for all six of the radii. I'm going to do that also for circumference, make a formula. So I'll click on the circumference, cell, equals, and then circumference is 2 times pi times r. So 2, and then the times, and then pi. So once again, I'm going to insert from math and trig the function pi. and then times, and now I'm going to select the radius cell again, hit enter, and there's my circumference. And once again, I'm going to fill down for everything in that column where we have data. So now I have radius, area, and circumference. At this point, I want to insert a chart, what Excel calls a chart. It's going to be a scatter plot, scatter graph. So I go up to the menu here that says charts and click on it. I have column, line, pi, bar, and I want a scatter diagram, which must be other. So I click on the other, and a number of options open up for me. Marked scatter is the one I want. I don't want lines in it. Scatter plots with lines in them are kind of meaningless. We want just a marked scatter plot. This little chart shows up here. Excel has already figured out what it thinks it wants me to graph. Sometimes it's right, many times it's not. So I'm going to manually control what I graph here. I want to have radius on the horizontal axis, the x-axis, and I want to have area and circumference on the y-axis. So I go up to this little box under data that says select, and then click on that, and this dialog box opens up. The chart data range here is highlighted. They picked that. We didn't. So I want to get rid of that. And then they added a series. That was what we saw on the graph already. And I want to get rid of that as well. 
Now I'm going to manually add just what I want to plot. So I'm going to click Add. It names itself Series 1. I'm going to give it a more meaningful name. I'm going to call this Area. Now the next box here is asking for X values. If I go to the right hand side and click this little icon here that looks like a spreadsheet, it'll take me back to the spreadsheet. For X values I want radius, so I'll select the radius values and then I'll click this little icon that looks like that little dialog box and it goes back to the dialog box and it has pasted into that field uh, the X values that I selected. I'm going to do the same thing for the Y values click the little spreadsheet icon, go back to the spreadsheet, and I'm going to put area on the y-axis this time. And after selecting, I click the little box and it goes back to the dialog box. Now at this point I'm going to I'm going to just click OK. And there's my graph. Now if I just look at this visually, it doesn't look like a straight line. One of the things that we want to do is test for linearity. And we can do that using a feature called Add Trend Line, which is really regression analysis that you might have learned about in the math class. Here's how I do that. I go to my chart, and I click any one of the points that are plotted here. So when I click on that, now I can go up to the top menu where it says Chart. Not Charts, but Chart. And one of the options will be Add Trend Line. Select that. And then I can click on Type over here and make sure that it's doing a linear trend line. And then I go over back to this little menu on the side and click Options. And then there are two options I want to display here. One of them is I want the equation to show on the chart. I want it to tell me what's the equation of the line it's going to make. And the second thing I want is I want the R squared value to show up on the chart. So I'm going to select both of those and then click OK. Now if I look at my chart, the equation of the line, y equals mx plus b, shows up there. And the r squared value also shows up. Now r squared is a measure of how well the points fit a straight line. 1 would be perfect fit, 0 would be no fit at all. And so the closer the value is to 1, the better. This r squared value is 0.95828, which for raw data in many circumstances would be really good. But because these are calculated data, that fit is really not very good at all. And so we would have to come to the conclusion that the relationship between radius and area is not a straight line relationship. I'm going to go back to my select box and add to this same chart the circumference calculations. So with the data box open, I click Add again. It gives me Series 2, but I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to call it Circumference. Then I'm going to select my x values, which again are going to be the radius values. So I select those six, go back to my box, select my y values, which this time are going to be the circumference values. Back to my box, and then click OK. And now when I look at my chart, I have two series on there. The blue series I already had, this orange block series is my circumference data. If I select any one of those, points, and then go to Chart and Add Trend Line, it will now add me a trend line. Go back to Type, make sure it's linear, it is. Options, I want it to display the equation and the R squared value on the chart. Click OK. Now, when I look at the equation and the R squared value this time, first of all, I notice that I have no y-intercept. That kind of makes sense, because the radius was zero, the circumference would have to be zero. The R squared value is perfect. It's a 1. That tells me that the relationship between radius and circumference is linear. So we can use this to test all kinds of real life data to see if the relationship that we have is reasonably considered linear or not.